ready to hop in a time machine and immerse ourselves in what Toronto region was like in the 1860s. And we're here with Wendy. Wendy, how are you? I'm great, thanks. It's great to have you here today. Thanks for having us. How did Black Creek Pioneer Village come to life? Well, the land we're on was originally Anishinaabeg land. And then in the early 1800s, by that point, the, the government was selling farmland to immigrants. And a young couple moved here and they farmed the land. Fast forward 130 years to the 1950s, their descendants sold the land to, to Toronto and Region Conservation Authority because they wanted to get out of farming at that point. TRCA moved a number of 19th century buildings here, more than 40, and added those to the original farm buildings. And last year, we celebrated our 60th anniversary of sharing the story of the Toronto region. Wow, so you're telling me that these buildings are authentic, true to themselves. How do you maintain these buildings and over the 50,000 artifacts that you have? Yes, it is a lot of work to take care of all of them. The 50,000 artifacts, which includes all of the 40 plus buildings that you see here, taking care of them, that's at the core of our mandate as a museum. So we do a lot of work around that because they're all really old and we want to make sure that they're around for another 150 years for people to learn from and to enjoy. We're very careful with the buildings themselves to use construction techniques that they used in the 19th century. And when we're looking after the artifacts themselves, we keep them all very carefully and we maintain them and we, we rotate them in and out so that people can have a chance to see, see new ones when they come by. Everything we do here, we try to get people active to have them exploring the past and to be having fun at the same time. So in addition to more than 40 buildings, which you can see, and staff who are dressed to look like they're in the 1860s, you might also run into one of our history actors. And our history actors take the stories of real people who actually lived and worked in these buildings and bring them to life through small plays. Then after the play, they step out of character and they show you the historical documents they used, the maps, the census records, the birth records, anything that they've got that tells us something about those real people. And then you can be a detective along with them and try to figure out what do we know and what do we surmise about these people. Wow, I absolutely love that. Coming here is an absolute adventure, which is awesome for families and adults as well. During the pandemic, you've shifted a little to offer virtual experiences for people to experience Black Creek Pioneer Village from the comfort of their homes. What can people experience on a virtual field trip? We have a number of different virtual opportunities right now. One of the most popular that we've got going on right now for families is our Tea and Treats program. So in that program, from the comfort of your own home, you're gonna work with one of our costumed educators and make scones from an 1800s recipe. Then once the scones have baked and your tea is steeped, you're gonna sit down with, with the educator and learn all about the do's and don'ts and the etiquette and fanciness of a Victorian tea party. I mean, did you know that it was very, very rude, it was considered extremely rude for a female guest to take off her hat if she came to your house for tea? Wow, I did not know that. And I also don't wear hats, so I would be considered very rude, I guess. <laughs> Where can people find more information? If you go to blackcreek.ca, that's where you're going to find all of our online exhibits, our learning resources for teachers, and our family activities to do at home. And you'll also find a listing of our virtual programs there. Well, I'm happy to be here today in person. I know that you have a lot of activities planned, so let's get to it. Great. Right now we're here with Anthony, who is an educator at Black Creek Pioneer Village. Anthony, I love that you are in authentic garb. How many Thank people you. generally walk around here in costume? So it depends on the season. Um, generally we have between 8 to 15 interpreters here on the site. Um, we're really hoping this summer, uh, hopefully if everything works out okay with COVID, that we'll be able to have about 8 interpreters here doing different discovery stations outside, so all safely um, away so that we can still participate with uh, visitors. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really exciting. Anthony, what is an education interpreter? Tell us about that. So an education interpreter is someone who helps to interpret history for visitors. So essentially, we kind of look at the past through different types of um, resources and records and help to explain that to people that come and visit us. Mm -hmm. So in coming here, not only are people able to see costumes and actors, 
characters as well, but also heritage breed animals. Yes. What are those? Um, so heritage breed animals are historic livestock breeds that are over 100 years old. So essentially, um, we have lots of different breeds here. We have over 60 different livestock animals that are all heritage breeds. Um, that would include our Clydesdale horses and our sheep as well, our Border Lester sheep. Um, and they're really important for us, not only for teaching children and visitors about uh, historic livestock and historic uh, techniques of farming, but also for conservation and biodiversity as well. All right, Anthony, we have all our ingredients here. What are we making today? So we're making switchel, which is a harvest drink. It's kind of like the Gatorade of the 1860s. It has lots of electrolytes in it, so it really picks you up if you have a lot of hard work to do. So the first step that we're gonna do is we are going to take apple cider vinegar. Now you might think vinegar doesn't sound like the best thing to start with, but Sounds a lot of them- sour. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But we're gonna add lots of sweetener to it, and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. Yes. What goes into making historical pop, and how is it different from the pop that we drink today? Um, so one of the big differences between pop today and pop historically is that pop in the 1860s was all homemade. So you would take ingredients from your kitchen and use them to make your pop. Now you're gonna take a sweetener. So I'm using molasses, which is the traditional way, but you can also use maple syrup as well. Mm. We're gonna take about four teaspoons or a tablespoon and a half of your sweetener. Okay. Look at that pour. This is real Canadian right here. Mm -hmm, it is, and awfully good. Now. We are gonna add a little pinch of ginger, okay? So just take ginger. your ginger, and you have there just a little tiny pinch of it would be great. Not too much. Not too much. Or else it'll be spicy. Yep, unless you like it spicy. I do like it spicy, okay. Okay, mix it up again, and all you have to do now is add a little bit of water. That's it? That's it. That was really easy. It is really easy. Yeah. Now I will admit, this is a bit of an acquired taste. I'm easy. a little nervous. No, you'll be great. <laughs> yep. Whoa. That's Switchel. So it does really perk you up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it is spicy. The ginger really gives it a kick. It really does. <laughs> but it is kind of fun. I love exploring what they would have drank back then. This is a pretty good drink to have, and it gives you energy, so why not? Well, thanks, Anthony. Cheers from six feet away.